Palpating the cervical spine is easiest in prone, keeping slight cervical flexion and retraction if possible to improve access to the spinous processes. If we find the occipital protuberance, the large raised area at the back of the skull, we can then move centrally downwards towards the cervical vertebrae. Initially, we'll drop into a small dip where C1 lies. This is because the first cervical vertebrae does not have a spinous process. The first prominence that we get to will therefore be the spinous process of C2. The spines of C3 to C5 are closely packed together and C3 is usually hidden underneath C2, making it difficult to count down the levels accurately. C6 and C7 usually appear more prominent and to differentiate, we can ask the patient to extend the neck noting that the spine of C6 will move forwards and therefore disappear under the spine of C7, whereas C7 will remain stationary. The thoracic spines are longer and angulate downwards and are therefore usually easier to palpate. There are 12 vertebrae and so depending on the level you are looking to identify, it may be easier to count down from the cervical spine or upwards from the lumbar spine. Due to the length and angulation of the spines of the thoracic vertebrae, the tip of the spinous process is in line with the transverse process of the vertebrae below, meaning that the spinous process that you are palpating will not be in line with the vertebrae from which it arises.